السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله through the duas of Amir Sunni Dawati Islami Hazrat Maulana Shakir Ali Nuri الحمد لله we have been given the honor to speak on the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants Sunni Dawati Islami all the success in this world and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants every single person behind the scenes the highest maqam in Jannatul for those for all their efforts Ameen. نحمده ونسلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. ما دي brothers sisters and fathers in Islam. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله. الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله. الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نور الله. صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم. The life of the Holy Prophet وسلم, from his blessed birth to his holy parting with this world to go and meet with his Lord, subhanallah, his entire life was a series of lessons, not only for Muslims but the entire of the human race. He has always been and will always remain the best creation of Allah Azzawajal, to walk the face of the earth. Inshallah today we will briefly touch upon the life of the final messenger of Allah وسلم, there is debate on the actual date of the beloved Prophet ﷺ's birth, but the unanimous verdict of the ulama concludes that the Prophet ﷺ's blessed birth was most likely on the 20th of April 571 AD, i.e. 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal. He was born in his father, Hazrat Abdullah radiallahu anhu's house, and he was born in the position of sujood, subhanallah. At the time of his birth, perfume emanated from his blessed body. A child's father is commonly informed first of a child's birth, but in this case, as the Prophet ﷺ's father had already passed away, Hazrat Abdul Muttalib, his grandfather, was the first to be informed upon the birth of his grandson. He received the news whilst busy in the Tawaf of the Kaaba. Upon seeing the bright face of Rasulullah ﷺ, his grandfather immediately showered him ﷺ with love and took him to the Kaaba to supplicate for barakah, and it was then decided to name the last of the prophets, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Lahab's slave girl, Thuwayba radiallahu anha, ran towards Abu Lahab, the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's uncle, to inform him of his nephew's birth. When she reached, he gestured with his index finger to her in excitement upon hearing this great news, and he said to her, Go, you are free. After his death, he was seen by some family members in a dream. And they questioned him on his condition within the grave, to which he replied, After I had passed, I had not received any food or drink, except water. And whilst he said this, he pointed to his index finger, to which he freed her, Thuwayba radiallahu anha. So they questioned him and asked him that, How is your condition in the grave? And he replied that after I had passed away, I had not received no food or no drink except water from this finger, by which I freed Thuwayba radiallahu anha. So, subhanAllah, this is proof that not only is it permissible to celebrate the birth of the Prophet sallallahu but it is also a means of relief for a non-believer in the grave. So imagine the blessings and the barakah that we as believers will receive by celebrating the Mawlidun Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, moving on to the early life of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his life as an orphan. The first person to foster the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was Thuwayba radiallahu anha the free slave of Abu Lahab. After her was the Prophet's mother, Bibi Amina radiallahu anha, and finally Hazrat Halima radiallahu anha. It was the custom of the Arab nobles to send their children to fo for fosterage into the nearby villages, as this contributed to the development of the child's growth. Another benefit was that they could learn the pure Arabic spoken by them, since the Arabic of the cities was a combination of both the eloquent and non-eloquent dialects. Hazrat Halima Sadia radiallahu anha did not receive any children, so she visited the Arab lands to find a child to foster. Halima Sadia, when she saw the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who was an orphan, said to her husband Harith, "We should take this orphan child with us, as it is not good to go back empty-handed." He agreed, and thus they took this treasure back with them, a treasure that came not only to illuminate the house of Bibi Amina and Halima radiallahu anha but to enlighten every corner of the earth. 
It was a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Under the care of Bibi Halima Sadia radiallahu anha, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam began to grow and his physical development was better in contrast to other children. When the time came to return the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam back to his mother, they received customary reward for their services. According to tradition, it was not allowed to keep him with them any longer, but due to the strong love that they had for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they couldn't, they couldn't bear to be separated from him. A large plague unexpectedly broke out within Mecca. Hence, they used this as an excuse to convince Amina radiallahu anha to allow them to take him back, to which she agreed. After they returned with him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, back to their house once again, it became a place of mercy and blessings. One day, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked Bibi Halima radiallahu anha, I don't see my brothers and sisters. Where do they go after they wake up? It was then replied to this that, they go out to take the animals grazing. After hearing this, he وسلم, said, Mother, send me with them. And due to his persistence in this, she unwillingly allowed him to go out with his brothers and sisters. In this way, Muhammad وسلم, became a shepherd of animals, a trait of all Anbiya and Rasul of Allah. This was one of the first signs of prophethood that the Prophet وسلم, exhibited during his early life as a child. So subhanallah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was a shepherd. And this was one of the traits of all the Anbiya. From the beginning of time till the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all the Prophets, all the Nabis were shepherds. They worked on the fields. And this was one of the traits of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that showed his Nabuwa in his early, in his early stages in his life. Now moving on to Shakya Sadr, the opening of the chest of the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. While in the pasture one day, the son, a son of Halima radiallahu anha ran back to the house and cried to her, Mother, something has happened. Three men wearing white clothes made Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lie flat on his back and they tore open his chest. I was afraid of them and ran back to tell you. Hearing this, Sayyida Halima radiallahu anha and her husband fearfully ran towards the field where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. And as they entered, they saw him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a state of bewilderment and fear. Sayyida Halima radiallahu anha asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whilst she embraced him. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what happened to you? To which he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he replied, Three people in extremely white clothing approached me and opened up my chest. They removed something and replaced it with another and sewed it back altogether. I felt no pain whilst this occurred. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. She, i.e. Sayyida Halima radiallahu anha and her husband Harith became increasingly afraid after hearing this. He said, I fear that he has been, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has been affected by black magic. You should return him to Mecca as soon as possible. Fearing that she could no longer protect him, she decided to return him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Mecca and Muqarramah. Upon returning him, she was questioned by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's beloved mother, Bibi Amina radiallahu anha. She asked him, Halima, you were so eager to take my son the second time. Why are you returning him so soon? Halima Sadia radiallahu anha replied and relayed back the story to her, to which Amina radiallahu anha replied, Certainly not. My beloved son can never be a victim of such things. He has unimaginable glory. So, what, what Bibi Halima radiallahu anha said to Bibi Amina radiallahu anha was that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, she was afraid that he had been affected by black magic. Bibi Amina radiallahu anha, she said that no, my son cannot be affected by black magic. Subhanallah. So it was at this moment that Bibi Halima radiallahu anha left the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the care of his mother Bibi Amina and bid farewell to him. The Prophet وسلم, had to overcome many hardships during the early stages of his life with the passing of his father before his birth and the passing of his mother at the tender age of six. Through these hardships, the Prophet وسلم, was able to find peace within himself by worshipping the one and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was these hardships which allowed him to build upon his character to such an extent that even before proclaiming prophethood, he was known by all the people in Mecca as as sadiq and Al-Amin, meaning the honest and truthful. Not only was his character beautiful, but his physical appearance and was a physical embodiment of his manners and etiquette, which stood to testify its beauty. Allah's last messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa was of good medium height, 
with a physically strong, muscular and healthy build. He was slim and without a protruding stomach. He had a wide chest and broad shoulders. He had a sun-tanned, whitish fair complexion. His face was slightly oval and well-featured. His forehead was broad, his eyes black and his eyebrows large, fine, thin and arched. His eyelashes were large and thick. He was modest by nature and generally he kept his lays low. He had a dark brown and lightly curled hair which had begun to grey but very slightly in the latter parts of his life. They flowed backwards over his head right up to his neck. He had a beard up to his chest and his moustache was trimmed. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he smiled, he, he smiled with captivating sweetness. His teeth were shell set and were brilliant white. He used a cotton headdress to cover his head and neck. Over his back, between his shoulders, he had a circular brown patch, like the size almost of a small coin, which was one of the signs of his prophethood as well, subhanAllah. He was always absolutely clean in body and clothes, and he used to dress very simply and humbly. He loved to use perfume. It is stated in Siratul Mustafa, written by Sheikh Abdul Mustafa Al-Azmi, which has been translated by Mawlana Muhammad Kalim Al-Qadri. It has been stated in that book that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was very fond of ithr, pleasant smells, fine scents and pleasant fragrances. He would use them frequently, even though his body, his body Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would emanate a natural fragrance which scented any Ali he walked through. He would say, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say that the perfume for men should be such whose fragrance is spread whilst its colour is not seen and the perfume for women should be such that whose fragrances don't spread but its colour is vis visible, i.e. for example, henna or mandi. This is mentioned in Sunan al-Tirmidhi. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that the men should wear perfume whose fragrance is spread, i.e. ithr, Whereas its colour does not spread, so its colour cannot be seen. And this is different to what women should wear, where, where the, what they should wear is things that colour spread, but their fragrances don't spread. For example, henna. So the Prophet wasallam, he had a keen likening towards being well-dressed and one carrying himself well. So we should all learn from this. And we should keep well-dressed as the Prophet wasallam, liked us to be that way. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he ate little, slept little and spoke little. He was soft of speech but clear and distinct. Sayyidatuna Aisha radiallahu anha narrates that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would not draw out his speech as you all do. He would speak clearly and lucidly and he would space out his words. Anyone who sat with him would remember what he had said. And this has been written in Shumayl al-Tarmidhi. Another hadith narrates that if he وسلم, had said something of great importance which required greater attention, he وسلم, he would repeat it three times, he would repeat it thrice in order that it may be understood correctly. Another hadith narrates that his speech was such that if someone wanted to count his words, he would be able to do so. Subhanallah. Now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to walk briskly and it was difficult for his companions to keep up with him. His walking was unique in its own way. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would walk with dignity. When he walked, he would walk with vigor, strong limbs and without languor. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would walk with a slight inclination, i.e. he would walk with a slight humbleness. And it was as if he was descending from a rock, walking down a slope. Sayyiduna Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that I never saw anyone who walked faster than the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was as if the earth folded itself up for him. We would tie ourselves out in exertion, walking with him. But for him, it was effortless. And this has been also been written in Shumayn al-Tarmidhi. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's movements were agile and active. So we learn from this that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had a likening to having good health and fitness. It has also been stated that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he never ate to his full. So we should take a lesson from this and we should persevere to be like him in every way, including how he would keep himself in good shape. His presence was dignified and imposing. He was truthful, sincere and unselfish. This was the beauty of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he possessed in every manner. He possessed beauty in his appearance, in his spirituality, 
in his character and manners, and even just being in his presence, it was a scene of complete beauty and peace, subhanAllah. When he وسلم, started to preach the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within Mecca and the teachings of the Holy Quran, which were against the beliefs of their forefathers, the hostility of the people of Mecca fell upon him. They were angry and hated him because he the messenger وسلم, was now trying to demolish their evil hold on society. The last messenger وسلم, therefore had to face all sorts of difficulties, oppositions, threats and even boycotts for almost three years. He braved their hostilities, taunts and ridicules in a manly way. He showed perseverance, patience and courage and remained steadfast in his mission, which was entrusted to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the spreading of the divine message became impossible in Mecca, he then migrated to Medina. Before entering Medina, which was formerly known as Yathrib due to the extreme poverty and illness that thrived within, the Prophet wasallam brought many blessings and cures to it that it changed from a city of poverty to a city of cure and riches. The migration to Medina changed the situation completely, from a position of weakness and helplessness to one of strength and power. In Medina, he preached unhindered for another 10 years until his blessed passing. Here, he organized his followers into a well-knit and disciplined community. Now, Islam was free to prevail. It was here that the first mosque of Islam was constructed, at Kuba, and it was also here that the first court prayer was made. It was also here that the direction for prayers was changed from Masjid al-Aqsa to the sacred, mo sacred mosque in which the Holy Kaaba was housed in Mecca al mukarramah One of Rasulullah wasallam's purposes in this world was to propagate the final, absolute, divine message, Islam, to the whole of creation and make final the proof of Allah Azza wa Jal. How successful was he in this? The answer to that is that all the Anbiya and all the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who came into this world propagated the message of the true one and only God Allah according to their capacity. However, if you gather the efforts of all the prophets and the Anbiya and try to compare them to that of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's efforts, it would be akin. It would be like comparing a candle to the sun, subhanallah. This is the magnitude to which His Excellence وسلم, was successful in spreading the message of Islam. The propagation of the message of Allah wa carried out by the beloved Prophet وسلم, was revolutionary to say the least. Khatam al nubiyyin the last of the Prophet وسلم, completed the mission of all Anbiya from, from Hazrat Adam salam, to Hazrat Isa salam, so precisely that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself states in the Holy Quran. اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورديت لكم الإسلام دينا That on this day I have perfected your religion for you and completed my favours upon you and have chosen Islam as your way of life. This has been written in Surah Maida, verse number 3. The 11th year after Hijrat was when the sad passing of the beloved Prophet وسلم, occurred. Rasulullah possessed knowledge of his death. The Holy Prophet وسلم, was well aware of his demise before its occurrence and he informed people of it at different occasions. This is evidence of his ilm al-ghayb, knowledge of the unseen. Hence, in Hajjat al-Wada, Rasulullah وسلم, said, I may not perform Hajj with you after this. And one of his sermons relayed a similar message. The Prophet وسلم, passed away shortly after he became sick. Historians are divided regarding the time of the beginning of the sickness. Nevertheless, on the 20th or the 22nd night of Safar, 11th AH, the Prophet وسلم, went to Janatul Baqi. And after returning, his health became slightly indisposed. It was a turn of Ummul Mu'mineen. Say, Sayyida Maymuna to host him. On Monday, his condition وسلم, had worsen, worsened and upon his wish, with the permission of all the Azwajay Mutahharat, he stayed at the home of Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha. Rasulullah had all the Salah in Masjid Nabawi for as long as he had the strength to do so and appointed Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an as Imam afterwards. The sickness continued in escalation However, on the Monday of his demise, he felt an improvement in his condition. Therefore, he lifted the curtain of his home and was able to see the people performing Fajr Salah as his home was adjoined to the masjid. His home was connected to the masjid. People saw this and became, ex became excited, asking him, 
Do you want to come into the masjid or Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? But he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gestured no to them and he closed the curtain of his home. If only they had known that this was the last time that all the Sahaba were able to see the most beautiful creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu narrates that the face of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was like a page of the Holy Quran in that it was white. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thereafter lapsed into states of consciousness and unconsciousness. At this time of his blessed passing, his breathing became heavy. His lips suddenly moved and the following was heard. As-salatu wa ma malakat aymanukum. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Salah and take care of those under your care. Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha sat beside him and held him to her chest. And without notice, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lifted his hand to the sky and pointing with his finger, he said three times, Balir rafiqil a'la. Now I desire none, but only the rafiq a'la. These words were on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's blessed tongue. When as his head dropped down and his eyes wide open, staring at the roof, his soul traveled to meet with his creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Indeed to Allah we belong and indeed to him we shall return. Surah Al-Baqarah verse 156. So there are many lessons to be learned from the life of the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From the message he lived, he lived to preach of the one and only God Allah to the beauty of his character by which even the kuffar of Mecca entrusted with him their belongings. So we must allow his excellence sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to remain an integral part of our lives as an example of the most excellent man to walk on the face of the earth. Subhanallah. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first of all gives us the tawfiq to act upon what we have said today and follow the example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us all to follow the example of the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and remain steadfast upon the deen. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us for any mistakes that we have made and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts what we have said today. Ameen. Wa ma alayna illa al-balagh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.